Hey everybody, I'm Steve-O, and my last meal would be pickled onion monster munch, spinach and artichoke dip, lobster and mashed potatoes with vegan butter, washed down with a can of liquid death armless palmer, tomato soup with a vegan grilled cheese, and a crunchy shrimp tempura roll with Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole, super hot coffee with non-dairy creamer, and a special pecan pie with melted Reese's peanut butter cups all over it. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today we're joined by super famous stuntman, master hot sauce blender, savior of animals and creator of The Bucket List, comedy special out on steveo.com. Steveo, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, brother. Of course, uh, can you just tell the people really quickly where you came from before this? I came directly from a colonoscopy procedure, which is notable because you can't have a colonoscopy without fasting, completely emptying your entire body for more than 24 hours. So I have not eaten in 24 hours and I could not be more excited for this interview. We, we've recommended all of our guests to get colonoscopies right before the show, and you're the first person that took that bait, right. which I'm a huge fan of. You've tightroped across alligator-infested waters. You have slingshotted yourself in a porta potty You've been at the depths of drug addiction. In all sincerity, why do you think you're still alive? I think that there's some kind of purpose that the universe has for me, and I don't know what it is, but I'm grateful that I'm still around. Spreading colon health awareness? Yeah, <laughs> right, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm every bit as surprised that I'm still alive as anybody else. No idea why, but I'm glad I am. I'm glad you are too, man. Have you thought about your last meal before? <sighs> no. I've thought about last meals in general. I think my career was born of my obsession with death. And I say that because when I was dropping out of the University of Miami in 1993, Go Canes. I felt like I was just ill-equipped to survive in the world because I couldn't make it to class, I couldn't keep a job, I wasn't able to do anything responsible, and my only real passion was for acting like an idiot and videotaping it. So I decided that was gonna be my career, but I didn't expect it was gonna work. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die having failed miserably at life. And I was mad about that, you know? So like my stunts were kind of me lashing out in frustration at death, which I thought was just waiting for me imminently. And it's such a thing, I, I get why you're obsessed with death. I think everybody should be mm -hmm. because we only have one instinct, which is to survive, mm. but we've only got one guarantee. We won't survive. So our existence, the human experience, is a cruel prank on us. <laughs> and I believe that our objective as humans is to somehow wrap our head around our mortality. So that's why people have kids, you know, mm. to have part of them live on. That's why people are so big into religion, because it promises everything's gonna be okay in heaven. And that's why the cavemen scrawled stick figures on the cave, because they knew those stick figures would outlive them. And that's me with the video camera, man. I love that, man. I choose to distract myself from death with food. Speaking of which, you ready to eat? Oh my God, am I ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, steve for your first course, we have the Walker's Pickled Onion Monster Munch. We imported this straight from London, and then we got the vegan spinach artichoke dip made with the vegan cream cheese, fresh artichokes, spinach, and then a little bit of vegan mozzarella on top. And then, of course, we got the chips, we got the celery sticks, and the carrot sticks to dip in. Okay, let me tell you that I have a real problem with this stuff, man. I am so helplessly addicted to this. It was actually my wish that my entire meal was just this. But they said, you gotta do more. We would have honored it. That was never presented to us. I've, right. I've, I've always been ready for somebody to have just a completely insane meal that makes no sense. Right. I love this stuff so much <laughs> that... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I'm into it. Get the hell out of here. Oh, my I God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm not kidding. If I lived in England where this is available, I would be really overweight. <laughs> I, but when have you ever had a problem with moderation on anything? That doesn't sound like you. That's the first standing ovation we've had in Last Meal's history, and all it took was somebody dropping their pants. Had I known that, I would have done that way earlier. Right, oh my god, I can't wait any longer. I've never had this before. Um, from bag to bag, the concentration of the flavoring varies. And if I could reach out to this company and say, please put more flavoring and make it more consistent, that would mean a lot to me. We can try and reverse engineer the flavoring and send you a bag. That's kind of what we do here. Um, and make it vegan for crying out loud. What's not vegan about this? It says it's got milk powder in there or something. Walker, shape up. The, this is the most British flavor, just pickled onion. Right. You know, like in America, we got the barbecue, we got cheddar, all that. No, you go to Britain, you got pickled onion flavor. Right, I mean, it doesn't sound appealing in America, but I grew up mostly in England. Mm. This is incredible. It's, I didn't expect it to be like a, a catcher's mitt shape. <laughs> what is this, a claw, a paw? What the hell is this, dude? It looks like the entry point for my colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a life-size Stevo butthole replica. Go to stevo.com, you can buy one for yourself. Now you gotta manufacture them. And of course, they are edible. <laughs> Speaking of stevo.com, good transition, Josh. Hell yeah. I watched your comedy special last night, The Bucket List. Thank you, man. It's unreal the way that you weave in elements of like classical stand-up and just one-man narrative, and then all the videos of some of the craziest stunts I've ever seen you do. But at the end of the day, it's also a really great love story and has a lot of heart. Tell me what the phrase, is there shit in my vagina, means to you. <laughs> well, I attribute that to the moment when I knew that my girl is the one and that I had to put a ring on it. We were filming a silly bit where I poop on a fan mm -hmm. and I had all kinds of laxatives and I'd been all backed up and quite literally the poo was flying across the yard. Because you pooped into a fan. Right. Yes. Everybody was running for their lives except for my girl who just moved closer to get a better <laughs> shot. She got so close filming that she actually thought with her little mini skirt on that there might have been some shit in her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean, Steve-O Shakespeare over here, man, that's beautiful. I told you, it's a love story. <laughs> it is though, there's a deeper <laughs> metaphor there. Find yourself someone who will question if your shit is actively in their vagina as well. That's yeah. how you know it's real. I mean, in, in a very literal sense, find someone who will stick by you when the shit hits the van. <laughs> that's yeah. the move, brother. By the way, thank you for the kind words. I love this project so much. My objective in making it was just to go way past anything I've done before as far as inappropriate, crazy, life-threatening. And I did it all, and I just made it into this multimedia comedy show which marries all of my worlds. Mm -hmm. Jackass meets stand-up meets evolved Steve-O in love. You know, it's everything. and. God, I love it. Of course, it's too crazy for any like network or streaming platform to go anywhere near it, which is why it's available at stevo.com. I have not said this yet to a guest, but your dick has brought me so much joy in the last 24 hours. Oh, I've said it to a couple guests, but uh, you're the one that I've actually meant it. I wanna ask like the deeper meaning behind what you do. Like, do you consider yourself an artist? Do you consider your stunts works of art? Is there a deeper meaning there? Thank you for asking that question. Um, I gave myself the official title of distraction therapist because the human experience is such a dilemma. It's such a stressful position that we're all in inherently, let alone the fact that a lot of people hate their jobs, aren't happy in their marriages, have crippling health concerns. Like, people need to be distracted from their problems, and I make it my job to provide that distraction. Uh, there's certainly no looking away, it's a hell of a distraction. In that sense, do you think, in a way, all art is equivalent? Because what I said earlier with, when I cook, when I eat, when I watch a movie, when I play sports, to me, it is literally all distracting me from death. Because if I sit still, I start thinking that none of this matters. When we go, it all goes black. Do you think all art is almost equivalent in that way? Like you versus Van Gogh, who's better? Van Gogh is pretty rad. I He's mean, pretty... <laughs> anybody who cuts off his ear, did he mail his ear to somebody? Like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, you and Van Gogh have that in common <laughs> if you do special. No spoilers, but like, an ear's involved. <laughs> 
You know, when I started out and I really thought that I was gonna die young having failed at life, like my my whole thing was just hurry up and try and capture craziness so that I can be discovered after I died. Really? My aim was to be the Van Gogh of the video camera. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm curious what the point of that is. Like, did you believe in an afterlife then or a conscious afterlife? I believed that my way of cheating death was to have enough absolutely insane video footage that I would still kind of exist after I died. What do you mean kind of, and what do you mean by I in that sense? Because I hear a lot of people also, dude, eat the, eat the dip, eat the dip, eat the dip. I'm talking okay. your ear off, eat the dip, man. This man hasn't eaten. Um, there's so many people that talk about how, you know, we are made of stardust and conservation of matter and all that, and that when we die, we only return to the earth. But to me, the disconnect in that is when they say, I will be a tree, I will be a star. It's like, no, there's no, there's no more I. The I's done. The particle's inside you, but like, what makes up the self? Well, we're getting pretty esoteric, potentially, but. <laughs> Dive in, man, welcome to the show. <laughs> I think it is erroneous to assume that the brain generates consciousness. It's not a uh, transmitter in my view. I believe the brain is a receiver of consciousness. Meaning that if you have a radio, if you take a sledgehammer to it, you can destroy the radio, but you cannot destroy the signal that the radio is picking up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the brain is all about. You can destroy the body, but you haven't done anything to the signal or the soul, if you will. Have you always had these sort of like esoteric beliefs around like sure. death spirituality? Like, oh even, from, even from a young age? Yeah, I've, I've always been super like focused on mortality and mm. death and spirituality. Where did your belief system come from? Like were you raised religious at all or no? No. My dad was a corporate executive, and so I grew up in five different countries because he was in charge of big corporations like all over the world. We were not religious. I think my parents, sadly, their religion was money. Mm, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, and uh, I kind of get it now, but <laughs> as I grew up, because my dad was increasingly successful, the house we lived in, just got bigger and bigger. And your happiness got bigger and bigger as that <laughs> happened, right? That's how it works. Well, I was self-conscious about it. Like I, mm. I was embarrassed for kids to see the big house that I lived in. Like I wouldn't have it, kids come over to my house. And my dad was chauffeur driven to work in the morning. And if I overslept at all and needed a ride with him, I would ride in the front passenger seat. And as they dropped me up at school, I would hug the driver because I was so embarrassed of my dad being like this rich guy. Dude, that's so funny. My dad drove a limo for work. We were all just kind of like poor and he worked multiple jobs. So he drove a limo for work. If he dropped somebody off at the airport early in the morning, he would swing by our apartment and pick me and my friend up and drop us off at school. And I would act like I didn't know him. Cause I was like, <laughs> I want to show up, you know, the baller 12 year old in sixth grade. <laughs> Man, we're, we should have parent trapped or something, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that, that's epic. All right, Steve, for course number two, we got a whole steamed Maine lobster served with plenty of drawn vegan butter, Old Bay seasoning, and fresh lemons. And then we have mashed potatoes. These are Yukon Golds, tons and tons of vegan butter in there. And then of course, the liquid death, armless Palmer. Yeah, it's iced tea. It's just really, really delicious, man. I love liquid death. I'm also a big fan of lemons, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go lemon for lemon with them. I can't not. I I love sour candy. Mm-hmm. Um, That's not bad. Yeah, for sure. I'm playing a dangerous game right now. <laughs> Cause this is gonna go to a place where I can't do it, Steve-O. I need you to know that. <laughs> Tell me why the lobster. When I was a little kid, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. My dad had a story about like me just eating three pound lobsters. I don't know if I ate more than one, but I've always been able to eat a lot. <laughs> you know, you guys gave me the opportunity to give you any mm -hmm. meal request I want. So of course I'm getting lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, a man who knows value. You also, you were you were vegan for a while. You've done a ton of animal yeah. activism, continue to do so. Um, do you think lobsters uh, also fear death? Um, I don't. 
And yes, I was vegan for a number of years, and um, I've reintroduced seafood into my diet. Nice, nice, nice. Turned into a slippery slope. I was like, okay. <laughs> you said earlier you were in food relapse mode. What does that mean? Oh yeah, well, I have addictive tendencies. I've heard. And uh, food is a thing, man. Like when I'm out of control with food, it can get pretty ugly. Yeah. So I periodically decide that I've hit a new rock bottom and then I reach out to my buddies who are in the food program and I get really disciplined about like photographing every meal before I eat it and sending it to them and no sugar, no flour. And then when I take one little tiptoe out of those boundaries, it all goes out the window and I'm off the wagon. Damn. As See, I am today. <laughs> I, well, hey, lean in, man. No, listen, I, I'm gonna have to be an enabler on the, on the food addiction here. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Dad. Um, okay, yeah, lobster. God, that's so damn. This is perfectly cooked too. Wait, try potatoes. I haven't tried potatoes yet, and okay, I can't yeah, eat it yeah. first. I'm rude if I don't eat it. I'm pretty good name for mashed potato, ma'am. You can't really go wrong with mashed potatoes. I'm just gonna do something a little, a little stupid here. Too, I'm not Steve. I'm a little <laughs> crazy, man. I'm a little loco. You know, I know you think you've yeah. done some shit. You literally read my mind. <laughs> Hmm. Talk to me about addiction, because in 2008, you basically had an intervention stage, right, with Johnny Knoxville. Not basically. <laughs> Very literally. You said that you were going to jump out of a window at 10 a.m., and he said, what's with all the early call times? Right. I had just been arrested for vandalism and felony cocaine possession. Mm -hmm. I got back to my apartment after like three days in jail and there was an eviction notice on the door of the get the hell out of here in three days variety, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, I knew I had three days. So I said, man, before I have to go, I wanna jump a motorcycle out the living room onto the roof next door. And I wanna jump out of the bedroom window 25 feet down onto the concrete. So I told Knoxville, bring a hot tub for me to land in. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm jumping anyway. I'm ready to die. And by writing that, I qualified myself for California's 5150 law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he that. came over to lock me up in a psychiatric ward. And that was arguably the best thing that ever happened to me because I've been clean and sober ever since. That's incredible, man. I know this isn't the point of the story, but do you think you could have made it? Uh, Nox, though, it's quick to point out that it was a very, very tiny gap between the buildings. <laughs> Wasn't that brave of a stunt. And uh, I later learned that jumping from that high into a hot tub is really, really bad. I, I got hurt. That made my 10 worst injuries list, jumping into a hot tub just off the roof of my house. Yeah, so, so 20, like it wouldn't, wouldn't go anywhere good. 25 feet would have been really devastating. That's a hell of a, that was expert, man. I was over here clawing at like a caveman. You were like <laughs> diagramming it out. There it is. <laughs> Mazel tov, it's a boy. <laughs> what do you attribute your lasting sobriety to? Like, it, did you do the whole 12 steps? I don't know, man. Yes, I did the whole 12 mm -hmm. steps and I have no idea where the willingness came from to really commit myself. Um, all I know is I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Do you think it was yourself or do you think there's a higher power? Because I know part of the 12 steps yeah. is submitting to a higher power. I mean, given how undisciplined and entitled and just the way I am, I can only attribute it to a higher power that I was able to really find the willingness to commit myself to this way of life and recovery. Yeah. My life is so good as a result, man. Like, for 15 years now, I've been largely undistracted from just trying to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, very little time wasted, very few things that I feel ashamed of. And yeah. when I do feel ashamed, I address it and acknowledge it, make it right. I just feel really good about my life today. It's all because of that. There's so much apparent joy that comes out of you, one, all the time. I mean, this is the last time we met, you were balancing a plunger on your nose as I ate a bowl of Frosted Flakes out of it. But no, I mean, even in, in your special as well, like there's so much joy that is just exuding out of you. Uh, you know, even as you know, you're dick flopping around, playing basketball with body paint on, 
Um, but it's it's all these things, even through like the very brutal moments, there's so much genuine joy that comes from you and it's something that I think people are very sort of receptive to. And something that, you know, me since watching Jackass as a kid, you know, that joy really, really comes out. Thank you, man. Steve-O, for your third course, we have a vegan grilled cheese with tomato soup, a little bit of vegan almond milk on top of there, and then we have a crunchy shrimp tempura roll, of course, served with Steve-O's hot sauce, both for your butthole and to destroy your butthole. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I don't even mess with the destroyer. The butthole destroyer is really just so wait, aggressive. Wait, 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 like, wait, like how aggressive? The top three ingredients are the three hottest peppers on earth. <laughs> Technically, they were just beaten like a week ago, so now it's only like two through four. That's not that bad. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Woof. Oh, you know what's, you know what's, <laughs> you know what's funny? Wow, dude, you're I a get, gnarly guy. I, I just want to impress my <laughs> wife. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we all did it when we were in middle school. I ate a habanero because of you. Um, wow. Really good. No, I have a lifelong love of spicy food, but I have gotten so messed up on, they call them super hots, anything that had to be genetically engineered past a habanero, that I can now taste a super hot and it gives me an instant gag reflex, even aside from the heat. Wow. So there's something in it. <coughs> That's really delicious though, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is just kind of too hot for me, but the OG Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole, I can't get enough of it, man. I just love it. Like, <coughs> no disrespect. Man up! Sorry, I sorry, I had to get this <laughs> up a little bit. I had to go JV football coach on me. If you want to yell at me, go for it. Man. <laughs> no disrespect to the chef, but <laughs> I don't even taste stuff before I put my hot sauce on it. Yeah, drench it, drench it for the whole group, please. Yeah, like I, I really, Damn. I really love it. <laughs> Wait, I gotta join in. I gotta join in. Why, why the uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup? I mean, that's classic comfort food combo. Like, why not? You know? Yeah, fair enough, man. I'm in relapse mode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tomato soup, you gotta watch out for because it is so full of sugar. Mm. You would never even, like, believe it. But if you read the label on a can of tomato soup, mm. it's a shocking amount of sugar. Like, can of Coca-Cola, shocking. Mm. I mean, that's every food in America, though. It's just plied with, like, sugar and salt. Uh, just yeah. enough to keep you kind of, like, happy and numb and keep profits up, you know? <laughs> Wow, this is really good too, man. Speaking of your food addictions, do you have other addictions like that lasted past your addiction to drugs and alcohol? Like, yeah, what are those? I had to get into a therapy and a separate kind of a rehab situation for sexual acting out. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did because uh, I had no hope of being in a healthy relationship before doing that. And I had a lot of work to do to become the man that the love of my life deserves. Mm -hmm. And that being Lux, who I met, and now have, I have this love story about. That's really beautiful, man. I feel like you have, you know, despite belief in a higher power and despite thinking that I don't exactly know why I'm alive, I don't know exactly why I beat addiction, but you have made a ton of just incredibly hard, difficult decisions and gone through an incredibly arduous process to be the man that you are today. And it's something that like I've always really, really admired. Well, thanks. <clears throat> I will push back a little bit though because it doesn't get harder or more arduous than carrying on the way I was before Fair. that intervention. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the the harder, tougher way. Do you think you're underestimated by a lot of people in terms of like intelligence? I know you've called yourself like a professional idiot before. Sure. But do you think that's just self-deprecation or is that how you prefer to be sort of in public, if that makes sense, um, like your camera facing person. I think I chose a career path that kind of made people assume that I'm a moron. And that worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, now kind of in the world of podcasting and I guess just being more evolved, like it's uh, maybe becoming apparent that there's more to me and I'm okay with that. But I will submit that this bucket list show is really clever for being as scatological as it is, featuring every bodily fluid that you possibly can, semen included, it's really clever. <laughs> it is, it, to me, it is one of the top five semen-based comedy specials <laughs> that I've ever watched. Sivo, for your final course of the final meal of your life, hopefully it's not true, we have pecan pie with Reese's peanut butter cups melted on top, super hot coffee, non-dairy creamer, 
tell me where did the pecan pie with Reese's melted on top come from? I just figured I can get anything I want. <laughs> Almost any dessert when I'm in food relapse mode is just a go. So I, I didn't even know what to order. You've never had this before. This is just a Steve-O original right now on the show. Right, I was just thinking, you know, like pecan pie came to mind, I want that. But like when I'm out of control, like Reese's always sound good. So throw them together, melt it up and let's go. You've said that, you, well, I was gonna say you've said you, you have a problem with moderation. No, you're somebody who like by definition has a problem with moderation. I consider myself to be generally in a lot of extremes. It, you know, my fiance tells me that. But do you think there's a certain amount of like unbridled creative energy that goes into people who don't have that moderation? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Me neither, man. I'm not sure that there's any correlation between creativity and addictive tendencies. Mm -hmm. You were talking earlier about how you thought you were gonna die by 30 or before 30. You're coming up on 50 now. Right? <laughs> Congrats, man, that rules. Right? Um, you said in your special, there's nothing worse than an aging attention whore. Do you think that the US specifically hates the process of aging that we try and hide it? I do. I think that it's a party foul. <laughs> <laughs> what, you getting, getting old? I think that aging is a party foul. Like, yeah, stop doing that, grandma. Right? And it goes back to the whole mortality thing. Mm -hmm. You and I are obsessed with mortality. Yeah. Most people just have their blinders on. They don't want to think about it. Mm. Like just la 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 la, anything but considering mortality. And that's why people don't want to look at old people because they're reminders of mortality. Mm. That's why old people just get shuttled into nursing homes. You know, like people don't want to think about death so much that I bet more Americans than you could even believe do not know the definition of the word hospice. Yeah, I, th I went through that recently with my grandma actually, just got put in a hospice, but you're also somebody who has seen death very, very up close with your, your mother suffered an aneurysm yeah. after years of battling alcoholism. And she had a very visceral sort of deterioration process over five years. It was awful. Yeah, what did you like learn about life and death in that? Well, in, in the suffering that I saw my mom go through for her last five years. Number one, when she did finally pass, like that was just a, a blessing because mm -hmm. the suffering was over. Mm -hmm. Number two, I felt super angry at any God that could allow for that to happen. And I really suffered with that until I adopted the philosophy that we're all just God, all of us put together. Do you think you could consider that like a sort of trauma response? Like, was that something necessary to get you through that? Or do you think that you would have come to that realization regardless? I think that that helped me heal a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just, man, life's, it's crazy, dude. Like, like I said, our whole existence feels like a cruel prank on us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here to distract from that. And this pecan pie is doing a really good job. <laughs> Try to distract yourself. I was trying to talk about more traumatic stuff, man. Well, because I did want to say it's it's really unique to see a body break down over time, and that's what happened with my dad, where I remember seeing it. This happened over the course of two weeks, though, but it was when I was 19 years old. He went in for what was supposed to be routine heart surgery, and then doctor called us, go, hey, everything's great, he's stable, whatever. And we're like, fantastic. Next day she calls and goes, hey, something's wrong. We need you to come down here. And so over the course of like maybe 10 days, Every single day was, well, he's in a coma now, but it's gonna get better tomorrow. Well, we would have to amputate just one foot now, but he's still gonna wake up. Okay, he's gonna need an art fully artificial heart, but we have the science. And each single day, we watched his body break down more and more. And that is what gave me like my most obsessive tendencies about death, thinking of like the corporeal body, watching it physically break down, you know, which I'm sure you had a similar situation with your mother. Yeah. and. I really do subscribe to the idea that all of creation is just this exercise in the universe experiencing itself. And a lot of that experience just seems like it sucks. Yeah. But I think that part of my faith is just believing that it's all, in some way I don't understand, valuable and important. Yeah. And that helps me with what my mom went through. like. That was a, a valuable and important experience for the universe on some level mm. that I'll never understand, but believing that helps. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of like 
surrendering yourself to something that you don't understand because I don't understand a lot of things. I don't know how a cell phone works. How the hell would I understand? Right. You know the the randomness or non randomness of the universe. Right. Yeah, Wi-Fi is a real stumper. What the hell is it, man? You're telling me there's just like, what are they, ghosts go into your phone and then you can hear people talk? Insane. What? Utterly insane to me. Oh my god, dude, I have a real problem with food, man. This pecan pie, I could just sit here and f*** up the entire pie and I probably will. I can't be a food sponsor, brother. <laughs> I'm simply going to be the food party friend that you call him for a good time. Sivo, you ready to get into the lightning round? You can keep eating, man. You don't even have to answer. You can just nod yes or no. <laughs> Other than me, who's the one person, dead or alive, you'd want to share your actual last meal with? Ooh, Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, sick. I know it's a lightning round, but why? I gotta know if he created the Holy Shroud of Turin as a prank against the Catholic Church. That's the best <laughs> answer I've ever heard. <laughs> Most people are like, my wife, like, not Lux. You would understand. Gotta check out the Holy Shroud of Turin. Uh, if you could kick any one of your jackass co-stars in the nuts right now, who would it be? None of them. I do not want to start that back and forth again. <laughs> but it's written on the card that if you pass on all of them, you have to kick me in the nuts. <laughs> and I don't want that, so I right. would say, all right. <laughs> uh, what's your greatest regret in life? It's better to regret the things that you have done than to regret the things you haven't done. I think that's a pretty good quote. My biggest regret, anything where I hurt other people, mm. I think is the where the regret is. Yeah. Because when I've hurt myself, it's always actually worked out pretty well, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and knock on wood, I've been able to mostly recover from all of it. But when I've hurt other people, that that's all the stuff I regret the most. Finally, are you happy? <laughs> Man. That's a tough question. Yeah. I started the last chapter of my book that I put out last year, A Hard Kick in the Nuts, with that question, in quotes. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. I went on to explain that that question has always just offended me. It feels invasive, it feels personal, and it bothers me because when I hear it, like a quick kind of scan tells me, no, I'm not happy. Like, I'm gripped by anxiety. I'm yeah. <laughs> totally uncomfortable and like, ah! Mm -hmm. And it's just somehow not socially acceptable to say that you're not happy. Sure. So I really just thought about this and I just chewed on it. And I arrived at the conclusion that I am not happy and I don't want to be happy because to be happy, it seems dangerously close to being lazy. Yeah. You know, if you're content, you don't need anything, you're just chilling. But no, I, I've got this default mode where I feel like everything's not gonna be okay. I gotta frantically hurry up and hustle to try and set myself up so that I'll be okay. And that's the fire under my ass that just keeps me hustling. So if I had a choice, be happy, or just gripped by anxiety and hustling and striving and accomplishing, I'd choose the hustle, man. I only have space to write one word, so I'm gonna put maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a definite no. I'm never gonna be happy. I always want uh, to fight for some better outcome. I love that, man. Steve-O, thank you so much, man. You have been an incredible guest. I've never seen someone eat with such gusto. I've never met somebody who's lived such an interesting life, and your special brought me so much joy when I was able to watch everybody go check it out. And finally, you can deliver your last words to that camera right there. Watch my bucket list special, because it's that good isn't it like it, dude it is that good honestly. dude i'm so stoked but i was told that what my last words are like really like mm. when i'm dying i just think on some level it's just kind of look at me i think i'm just an attention whore through and through <laughs> like uh i can't and i'm an aging attention whore and it's just still gonna be look at me <laughs> that's it, man. sad reality yeah my last words look at me and look at my bucket list special because it's really crazy. Steve-O, man, thank you so much. And thank yeah. you all for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new videos out all the time. Go to steveo.com, get the bucket list special. Reasons on pecan pie is a good call. Dude, this is a revelation, man. <laughs> I don't I don't feel so good, Mr. O. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Face the reality of mortality head on with our new Last Meals Hat and Tea, available now at mythical.com.